So that's me done. Well, no, I got I got one more section I I gotta that I get to run through. Actually, this is gonna be this is gonna be fun. But before we get there, uh, I want Jack to take us on a journey into his everyday usage of Canboard. All right, yeah. Every day I do check Canboard. I look at it every day. I have my th- we'll just call it three instances. At work, we do use Jira. I have a personal instance of Canboard set up, and then we have our R Compose instance of Canboard set up. All three are managed just a little bit differently in how they operate, but at the end of the day, I can look to Camboard and say, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm going to do next. And I don't know if it's the title that I really like of what's best next, but honestly, I just keep <laughs> going back to it just because it's so easy to reference and be like, oh, what's best next? And it's a good little phrase I say in my head, like, what's best next? And that's like, oh, well, let me just check my Camboard and go back to my Camboard here and you know, see what is best for me to do next. Walk us, walk us through that. So, I mean, what does it, what does it look like? I have to ask myself, well, am I constrained for time? Mm. Because I, I do complexitize my tasks at work and on our R Compose board. Now, for my personal board, I most of them are just lingering like, hey, you know, this might take six hours. This might take two minutes. It's just like a general placeholder for, hey, you should do this and get around to it. But it's kind of like a loose, like, you know, fle- pretty flexible type thing. Now, work in the R Compose board, I absolutely do based on complexity. I check out, I say, hey, I have a half hour before lunch. What can I complete in a half hour that's going to be easy? That's something I can just knock out and, you know, move over to the Duncom. Or, you know, what do I have an afternoon to take care of? Or what do I have an evening to look at and just block out everything and, you know, take time on, you know, an, an eight or a 13 task. So I really use complexity in the two, I guess, more professional environment of Camboard. And then my personal one, I already kind of talked on it, but I have this, uh, it's not notes because it's items I need to take care of and track and do. And I have, uh, I manage them through the columns and they're in different swim lanes, but it's a much looser structure, I would say, than R Compose or Jira at work. It's kind of like a, hey, you should probably get around to this, but if you don't, or when you can type thing, like a I don't want to say I treat it like a to-do list because there's no organization or structure what in the to-do list. I would say that it's a step up from the to-do list, right? And, and it's a step down from a like collaborative Kanban instance uh, yeah, because sure. I, I I do the same thing. I have I have my own personal board for myself. I find that a lot of the stuff there. It's not necessarily that it's unstructured but that it lingers uh, sure, and, and right, it's a lot right. more nebulous. The descriptions, I don't have to let anyone else know what I'm working on. Kind of your own brain, you know, it's, it's like uh, yeah. it's there for me. It's not, you know, no one else has to pick this up and say, all right, well, I'm reviewing this, but what does this mean when it's done? That's exactly why I use it too, because at that point, then I'm able to be in the moment way more. Cause if I, if I'm able to dump the context of my brain out somewhere and just say, okay, let me just, let me put it somewhere else. Right. I'm able to forget about it actually for right. a moment. That's what it is. Yeah. And put all of my focus into one thing. Yeah. What's best next. Yeah. Yeah. I do want to dive into project scope, but my backlog, it's a laundry list of items and stuff to do. Some of the stuff is important that I, I do separate it kind of based on criticality. But I'll take my music board, for example, it's default swim lane, which is like actually physically go out and buy so, an instrument or buy new strings. Like, you know, literally need to do this versus I have a swim lane for theory. It's like, well, you, you know, if you're going to get better at music, you should probably know the theory behind it. All right. Let's just put everything in our theory tab, which could be a category, but don't get me started on that. And then I have my, <laughs> it's called uh, songs is my other swim lane that I have. Any song that I'm working on learning or I want to learn, this is where you kind of get in the problems because the category I set for my music board is uh, piano and guitar. So I have a, okay. a keyboard. I have like a, a keyboard. I think it's it's smaller than the standard keyboard, but I have it there. So on my music board, I have, you know, my default lane, whatever. That's just pick up strings, tune, X, Y, Z, whatever. Theory, I'll categorize it because it's easier on the piano to learn theory. So I'll have a task, you know, learn circle of fists. It's like, okay, well, for me, circle of fists is pretty easy to pick up on a guitar. I don't know why it is. So I'll categorize it. I'll just toss it under guitar. But, you know, some of the other items like chord structure, it's like, oh, well, I do need to learn this for piano. So why don't we just say it's for piano? It's way more structured than if I just had a 
like you said, a to-do list that said, you know, I had songs intermixed with theory, intermixed with pickup strings. I look at the to-do list and I have no idea where to start. Coming from a, a background where I love to, to break down boards, there's I think there's a reason why I want to do that. And 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 I see I see the reason and rationale behind each of those three swim lanes, right? Right. Uh, because if if we think about we want to manage the volume of work that goes across our board. We're going to manage them in different struts. You're going to have songs up. Let's just call it up at the top, right? Yeah. So we're going to, we're going to have songs up there because songs is going to be something that we, we don't want to have too many overlapping songs at once, right? Right. But if we overlap uh, learning a new song with getting a set of strings, that's not going to interfere with each other at all. Right. Those are two independent things, right? So in order to limit your work, you would want to limit it in, in one of those three columns, or at least that's what you've identified, right? Right. And that works well enough for you, right? You're limiting your work as it applies to each of those three sections. Right. That's absolutely true. So this is where it gets crazy though for me with the personal board is that I have I have about six projects going to my personal board that vary from, you know, meta to yeah, you know, all the stuff I want to do for the home lab, all the stuff I want to do for music, keeping up with all the coding stuff and Ruby and Python and everything. It's very easy for me, and this is a flaw, it's very easy to just drag stuff over into planned or work in progress and then say, All right, I'm working on all this because I have let's just say six projects. There's no way I'm going to be able to sit down and point at 30 items for myself in progress across six boards. So the really nice thing I like about Camboard is that it provides that dashboard. I think you, you talked about it last week of it just that basic dashboard view that you have. And thank goodness they put in number of tasks in backlog, number of tasks in plan, number of tasks in progress, and number of tasks done. And that's just a basic setup you're able to see what's in backlog, what's in done, and then what's in the middle there. And that's been immensely helpful for me. I, I do kind of put a, a work in progress limit on myself because there's no, there's just no way you can just navigate all the tasks that are out there across, you know, six boards. Since I don't complexitize the stuff on the personal board, it's a long lead time. I, sometimes I just don't get around to it and stuff sits out there. Well, okay. So, so jumping off that though, you said it's a temptation. For you to just throw stuff into planning and say, yeah, this is something I'm going to work on. Well, I will throw, I'll keep it, I'll throw it in backlog. So plan for me is, uh, it's not work in progress, but it's like, uh, this is next. You might not like it, but I would call it a prioritized backlog. <laughs> it's the prioritized backlog. I look at it and I say, all right, well, this is what I have planned. Look, I got so much stuff I want to do in the backlog, but no, I'm focusing on what I put in here. So, and, and this is why when we were going over cam board the first time, I think we said we have a Kanban system that has a little bit of sprint to it. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the way we function is that we, we take a holistic view of the entire board once every two weeks or so and say, okay, did, did we complete stuff? You know, or, right. uh, do we have something that's been on there for three weeks or four weeks? Right. Uh, we, we make sure to capture that time in there, but we don't erase the entire board. Right. Where, where, where is that would force you to prioritize the backlog because then everything gets pushed back that hasn't been completed, you know, and it also has other drawbacks in, in that, you know, there's, there's less that you can actually get done because sometimes you're just waiting on stuff. Then you have One. nothing on deck. You can't right, pull right. anything because you're in the middle of a sprint. Kanban methodology being that more so of a flow state, you're able to prioritize a backlog. But that, you know, you, you touch on it. It's it's hard to prioritize stuff from the backlog to, to planning. I like the way you said it's the hybrid between sprint planning. What do you want to call it? Scrum or sprint versus a, a Kanban methodology. Yeah. I really like that you said, I don't have to sit down in two weeks and say, all right, everything's going back to backlog that wasn't completed and let's restart this process. It's, well, this is in waiting. So I can just kind of leave my board in kind of this state for right now. It's fine. I can come back to it, pick it, pick it all back up where I left it off and start, you know, moving items and reprioritizing if I have to. That's a solid way of reprioritizing, but it also means you have to take literally everything into account from your backlog. And, and as you said yourself, I mean, you have plenty of stuff there. Right. I think we have like hundreds, yeah. maybe. Yeah. We may yeah. have it. We have at least a hundred in oh, the backlog. Yeah. It's like, you know, what, what, what do you do about that? And something that I've been uh, tumbling into, and one of the things I found is helpful is when creating a task 
to definitely associate it with some kind of a category. I, I say we switch the context to colla- like our compose for us. Sure. I think with a personal board, it's very easy because it's just one, you know, it's one brain working on this. It's very easy yep. to say to yourself, yep. oh, I know what this means when it's done. I, you know, I, I have one out there that says evaluate cu- cube spray. I have literally evaluate the question mark and then cube spray. If someone picked that up, that wasn't me. They would probably say, what are you talking about? But the way we have it, our compose is we have a definition for done, which I really yes. like. You can grab it and you can say, yes. all right, this is done when this happens. Yes. Yeah. And it's, it's immensely helpful to do that. It's immensely helpful because at, at that point, if you have something that you need me to review, obviously my very first question is, all right, does it meet the criteria of done? If right. not, it immediately goes right, back in right, execution. Right. It's like, Hey, you need to look at this. Uh, and if it does, we can, we can go into other things, but uh, that's, that's obviously a really great thing to have as far as collaboration sake goes. Um, the other thing that, that I kind of wanted to segue into was uh, categorization, right? So in, in managing backlog, obviously there's going to be things that need to be prioritized over other things and, and, and moved here and there. Uh, I've had this idea of categories being almost like the different kind of hats you wear. Yeah. Uh, right. In, in the business, there's also another way to take categories um, or, or you can do the same thing with tags or, or what have you, but uh, you you can you can categorize things by the project that they're in, and, and projects are obviously yeah. a little bit different than tasks because projects are, are are a bigger picture and presumably a thing that has an end date that is made up of several tasks. Uh, then I can simply focus on the things within this project to prioritize. And right. I can limit my backlog by the project that has been prioritized. And it's a way to abstract tasks. And then at that point, you're not prioritizing my task, which tends to get very personal because it's it's something that you're you're putting your pouring stuff into. Whereas right. the project is going to be way more collaborative. Right. There's a lot of back and forth with the project. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of back and forth and we can each kind of agree what the priority of that project is as opposed to other projects and then be able to sort a backlog based on the project that it's currently in, not on the very specific task that it happens to be. Right. And I think the great example of that would be uh, a lot of what we did with Portal when we were first starting only because it had to make calls to Run Deck, you know, so it was a project. I don't, I don't know what we called it. I think we used tags, not categories for it, but it was still nonetheless same same thing, same exact thing you're talking about. It was, uh, hey, we need to get Portal 1 off the ground. We need uh, this portion in Run Deck completed, and we need this stuff in uh, you know, in Ruby code, in actual Portal to make calls. Well, that's you and me both collaborating on this because we both need our separate parts completed and worked on. So we tagged it, and then we prioritized it to get it out the door because we knew that was something we needed before we got to the first instance or you know, minimum viable product for Portal. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so that, you know, being an example of how, you know, based on the project itself that we had to get completed, you know, that project was the thing that prioritized it. It wasn't, Hey, you know, Jack wants to work in his Ruby code, so I'm going to let him do his thing. And then I'm not going to do my end of it until, you know, the next whenever, right. Until I feel like it. Right. It's not that it's like, right. well, no, we've, we both agreed that we're going to prioritize this project. And in order to do that, that means that these things out of the backlog need to be brought up and prioritized right. themselves. Um, so I don't know, project led backlog prioritization <laughs> as a forward <laughs> definition. I don't know. That's a lot of words right there. <laughs> <laughs> the perfect segue is that you were talking about projects and for us, we did use tags. So there, there, I was going to go th- over just a couple search, uh, items that I've used. So I, I think by default, Camboard shows all open tasks. But there have been times where we've made extensive notes in tasks and we've had to go back and I've said, all right, well, I know this is out there somewhere and Canmore provides actually a really good search. What, what I've done is I've wiped away open. I've cleared the uh, you know filter by open task and I've just searched and said, all right, let me find anything with the word in it and it'll show everything. In that done column, because I, you know, it's in, it's going to be in done because we've already completed it. It's already, it's a, a task from the past. Pulled it up and said, "All right, this is the comment I needed to reference." And they have a nice linking method for comments, so you can link to the exact comment in the task, and you can say, "Hey, this is actually where we found, you know, this piece of information, or where we needed this information." So I, I don't know if it's the perfect note-taking place, but I, those comments are valuable. 
like I, w- I would almost call it a knowledge base in those uh, comments because there is a lot of back and forth during the review process. And, you know, when we go over certain, you know, Skillshare courses or code review, it's, hey, the snippet is in here. Check it out. This is what it's supposed to do based on what I what I've commented. It's not searchable by comments. Right. It doesn't make for a good documentation base. For which we have Bookstack because right, that, right. yeah, that, is, that, that is does the documentation. The yeah. documentation right. um, now, another thing too, uh, I don't know if you played around with the list view at all, but that absolutely lends itself to the searching as opposed to the, the board view. No, I have not done that one. So it's, it's just the list view as you would see in the dashboard. It's, okay. it's the same kind of list yeah. view. Yeah. But if you're going to, be searching for keywords and it's just a list. It's a lot easier to ingest, especially when you're searching, especially stuff that we already know is going to be done. That way I don't have to like open up the done column because usually I got that, you know, minimized and that's just another, you know, hassle for me to open that search, close it. So uh, the, the list view I think does a really good job at, at displaying that. Yeah. uh, I mean the other, I was just going to cover, you know, one or two more things here, but um. Uh, searching by signee is helpful just to track, you know, especially for me, I just like to see what's mine, um, being all selfish, but, uh, finding out what's mine, uh, searching by tag and searching, uh, based on, you know, a a keyword that's out there. Uh, other than that, you mentioned something that I did want to touch on that I think is important, minimizing backlog, minimizing Mm done and and Mm -hmm. only showing what's right in front of you and that you need to complete today. You know, there's a time and a place to prioritize. We do it every week, which is perfect. Minimizing those two columns, you're not sitting there and, you know, peeking over your backlog saying, all right, well, what can I be, you know, what do I feel like working on today? You're, you're falling prey to the same old to-do list. Right. Pitfalls. That's what it is. If if you have your entire backlog right there and you're just saying, all right, well, what am I going to pull over? You're only cheating yourself at that point. You you do have to kind of commit to, all right, I, I said I was going to do this. This is what's next. That's everything I have for everyday usage the everyday usage is a little bit opinionated uh so book stack we're gonna have uh, more information out there on our opinions so i would highly recommend checking that out 